I'm sure you've heard, um, look before you leap. Well, today I'd like to give you a different phrase that uses one of the same words, and I'd like to say, let's take a leap of faith as we look forward into a new year. I want to take you to the book of Hebrews. It's the chapter of faith, chapter 11. I want to read to you one verse. We'll look at another in just a little bit. Hebrews 11.6 reads this way, And without faith it's impossible to please him, for whoever drawn near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. When you hear that word faith, what, what picture comes to mind? What do you think of when you hear the word faith? Well, of uh, the mental pictures of faith in action in my memory is that of my four-year-old son, Shane. He's standing at the side of the swimming pool, just shivering, and he's looking at me in the water, and I can remember calling to him. I'm only inches away, and I say, go ahead, Shane, jump. Well, you know, at that four years old, he faced a major crisis of faith. Can he trust me, his dad, to be powerful enough to catch him if he jumps in? Does he trust that my character is good, that I'll keep my promise to catch him? Well, after a time of deep thought and contemplation, that which only a four-year-old could have, Shane acts on his face and he jumps into my arms. Believe it or not, he's pleasantly surprised. He wants to climb back out and he wants to do it again. And again, and again, and again. You know how that is. Well, that's what faith is. It's putting your belief and trust in something or somebody outside of yourself and then acting on that belief. Hebrews 11.1 1 reads this way, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And I like that definition, but I also like this definition of faith. Faith is believing God and his word, no matter how I feel, because God promises a good result. So if we go to Hebrews chapter 11, there are numerous, numerous examples of faith. And as you think about these examples of faith, we go here and we, we look in verse 8 where it says, By faith, Abraham. And it continues to tell number, numerous accounts of Abraham and his faith. But here we have Abraham. He's venturing his, from his home to, to the unfamiliar. He's trusting a promise that wouldn't materialize for decades promise of God. Then, then the same patriarch places his beloved son Isaac on an altar, trusting that somehow God would either provide an ultimate sacrifice or raise his son from the dead. As we move deeper into the chapter, we find it's in, in verse about verse 23, we find Moses listed. And here we have Moses. He's choosing to leave behind the pressures and the power of Pharaoh's palace and he goes to shepherd a group of grumblers that are out of slavery and to lead them into the promised land. And step by step and day by day, Moses continues to act on his faith in a promise that wouldn't completely materialize till, till after his death. If you look into the book of Hebrews chapter 11, you'll find over 17 examples of trust in this hall of faith chapter. And of course, the truth is, acting in faith isn't, isn't always easy. It causes us to step away from what is comfortable and safe. And like the four-year-old at the edge of a large swimming pool, look into unknown and unfamiliar circumstances. I don't know what it is for you today. Maybe it's the challenge to, well, I would guess most often it's the challenge to surrender. Specifically, maybe it's your need to surrender your finances to God's control or surrender to your decision to make a career change trusting God or how faith is that decision on which college to choose and seeking God's will there or the need you have to witness to a friend who you need knows to hear about the love of God. Or maybe you need to surrender as you wait on the Lord for the right person if you're looking to be married a spouse. Or maybe you're battling cancer and you need to trust God in that. Or maybe you even need to move forward from all the fear that's being imposed on you right now. Or it may be forgiving a, that one who has offended you. Or maybe even taking a stand so that you will uh, not compromise your integrity or your purity. Whatever the case when God nudges our heart beyond what we can imagine and manipulate on our own, 
we then have the opportunity to act on faith, faith that we profess to believe. The questions we face are simple as the question in my son Shane's little heart when he was at the edge of the pool. Can we trust that our Father is powerful enough? Do we trust that he's good? And the answer to both questions, if you'll understand and believe the teaching of God's word, is a resounding yes. You see, our omnipotent, all-powerful, our omniscient, all-knowing, our omnipresent, ever-present God, this God of ours can handle every situation we face. He is the very essence and definition of what is good. God will always do what is right, and we can trust him to ultimately not let us fall, or we could say not let us fail. What I like best is that Hebrews 11.6 tells us here that faith triggers a response of pleasure in God's heart. You see, when we demonstrate our trust in him, he's not apathetic or indifferent, but he actually delights in our belief in him. In fact, as his children, the writer of Hebrews says, we cannot please him without faith. He says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I don't know. I don't know what you're looking at in this new year. I don't know what pool you're standing at the edge of today. But I do know this. I do know that the character of the Father who is calling you to act on your faith is true, and you can trust it. I invite you to the pleasure of trusting Him, our Heavenly Father, today. So I guess I can put it this way. Come on in. The water's fine. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to take a simple verse and apply it in a realistic way to our lives, knowing that uh, what we need to do as we stand on the edge of issues and situations and decisions is we need to, to take a leap of faith and trust you, for you are good. You're a father who can be trusted, a father who loves us and cares for us, has our best interests at mind, and desires that we would do his will. Thank you, Father, for the powerful truth of your word. Thank you for the words of, of Hebrews that remind us that faith is um, believing what we can't see and, 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 and understanding the truth of your promises. So God, I pray, I pray that we will live a life, take a leap of faith, so to speak, so that our lives can be pleasing in your sight, trusting in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.